Hi there, welcome to BSF Recovery Team. Well, it's mid-February now, and some of you might know what that means. It means that our club's March winter run is coming up soon. And, well, as the Rubicon is still in my garage with the front axle all tore apart from last fall, we uh, found an alternative. We're going to do a budget trail rig. We found a 2003, well, actually, let's go out and take a look at it. We'll see if we can fire it up and bring it in the shop and see what we got to do to get it trail ready. Well, here it is, Jeep, Grand Cherokee, Laredo, WJ. Uh, been on the back lot of the dealership that I work at here for quite a while, so we cut a real good deal on it, and we're going to turn it into a budget trail rig. So we'll see if it starts. Nope. The battery is dead. Well, let's see if a jump box will do the trick. Ho oh, ho! Hood struts are wore out. Come and hold the hood up for me, would you? Hey, it sounds like we got some juice. Oh, All right, well, now we got to get it into the shop, and uh, we'll probably have to put a battery in it and make sure that. Uh, Everything on it passes uh, for the tech inspection for the trail ride. All right, well, we got it in the shop now, and it looks like the first thing we need to do is put a battery in it. That one's uh, froze and uh, tests no good. So we got a battery here. Seat cover's going to put a battery in her new trail rig. What? I don't know how. Sure you do. No, I don't. Well, wait a minute. You got to take the old one out first. What? I can't just stick it in? No, it has to go in the place of the old one. Oh. All right. So we need to loosen up each battery post clamp. Uh, positive one here and the negative one here. If you do the negative one first and take that one off, then you don't have any risk of creating a spark or uh, giving yourself a shock. I can get shocked? Not if you do it correctly. So I'll loosen up that one first, and we'll take that post, the negative battery post off first. How far does it got to come off? That should be far enough now. See if you can wiggle the post and pull it off. You can go ahead and grab it right here. It's not, it's not going to hurt you. There, just like that. It's off. Okay, now this one, different size wrench. These look really bad, these connections. Yep, we're going to have to clean them up. Okay, that should be far enough. See if you can wiggle it off. No. No? Nope. Right. Give you a little a tool to give you a little help. A hammer? Nope. Put the screwdriver in here. Turn it a little bit, open up the, there we go, it's like that. All right, now we can lift that battery out. Okay, looks like we should clean the tray a little bit. I'm going to go get the battery. Well, hang on a second. One of the safety features is that we need a battery hold down, and I see that the factory one is missing, so we gotta create a battery hold down first. What? Yeah, go set the battery oh. back in the toolbox. Oh, buddy. Okay, so the factory battery hold down is missing, 
Uh, so I picked up a universal one uh, from the parts store for us to secure the battery because I know that that's one of the tech inspection things that they look at is to make sure that the battery is secured in place. Now the universal one is a little bit different than the factory one so first thing is, is we're going to have to use uh, one of the factory holes here that has uh, a spring nut in it so we got to remove that spring nut so we can put one of these uh, J-rods up through the hole. How do you do that? Got a pick? We should be able to pop that out with a pick. There we go. And now, in the back side here, we have to create a hole. So we're going to have to drill a few holes in there so we can put the other J-Rod up through this side. Now we got to enlarge one of the holes to a slot. That should do it. So now we can grab the battery and set it in place. Okay. Yep. Now the other half of this battery hold down is adjustable and goes over the top of the battery. this side of the cable. Okay, now we can set a washer on there. And put a wing nut on. And there, we have a nice secure battery. That'll definitely pass tech. Okay, are we done? We have to hook up, clean up the cables and put those on yet. I can't just put them on? Nope, we want to clean them up first. First we'll clean up the inside of them. And now, we want to make sure that this was able to squeeze down tight onto the post. Since we took a little material out of here, what we have to do is we have to take a little material off of this in order to make sure that it'll squeeze down tight onto the post. Okay. How do you do that? Well, first thing is, is we've got to get the bolt out of there. All right, so we'll take a little material out of here so it'll clamp down on the post to make some tight. Hopefully that's enough. And a new... Uh, Battery clamp bolt. <clears throat> Down there all the way. Okay. 
And it clamps down on there good and tight. There's a term for you, huh? Good and tight? Good and tight. And everything will be all right. All right, that one's good and secure. The battery's good and secure. So that'll certainly pass tech inspection. Uh, I don't know how I ended up finishing this. I, I thought you were going to do it. So what's next? Well, we have to make sure that everything's going to pass safety tech inspection. So that's what this sheet is right here. So what's on the top of our list? Steering and linkage. So what they do there is they check the steering linkage to make sure that none of the tie rod ends on the steering linkage are loose and ready to fall out because they don't want you to break one on the trail and have an accident. I did check that. So what they do is they have one person in the vehicle and uh, with the vehicle running, they rapidly turn the steering wheel from 9 o'clock to 3 o'clock. Then the other person is underneath the front of the vehicle looking at the tie rod ends and the steering linkage to make sure that nothing's loose and ready to fall out. Should we do that? Well, it's on this paper. Let's do it. Okay. All right, start it up and wiggle it back and forth. They look tight. Do it a little more. Okay, everything looks good. That'll pass. All right, that looked good. That'll pass. What's next? Uh, brake line, brakes and lines must have front and rear brakes. Lines must be secured to the axle and or frame. All right, well, we'll have to lift it up on the hoist and take a look at that. Okay, let's take a look and make sure that all the brakes are there and that there's no brake lines hanging down. So the calipers are on the back side. Yep. Okay, and the brakes are there. No brake lines hanging down anywhere where they shouldn't be. No. Okay, let's take a look here. Have brake lines secure and in place. This one over here. And up there. Okay. So let's go towards the back of the vehicle, take a look. The brake lines are over here on this side. Yep. Okay, this one's secure all the way. Let's go around the back side of the axle. Take a look, it's attached to the axle. Like it should be. All right, looks like we're good. What's next on the list? Lug nuts. Okay, what does it say? No more than one of five or two of eight missing per tire. Okay, so let's take a look at that. All five are there on that one. All there. All five are there on that one. All there. All five are there, yep. All there. Okay, so that passes. Secure place to hook. All right, we'll come back to that one. Let's skip to the next one. Suspension system and new bolts. Okay, well this isn't a leaf spring suspension, but let's take a look real quick and make sure that all the suspension components are there and nothing's broken. Specifically on this one, we'll be looking at the link arms, which are these arms here and here and make sure that we don't have a broken spring. So the, those link arms look good, they're intact. Now let's take a look at the coil spring. Is there anything broken on the coil spring? Not that I see. No, okay, other side. Looks good, looks good. Okay, and look, look at the back. Looks good. So our link arm there looks good. Coil good. spring. Okay. Good. Upper link arm, which is this wishbone here. That's intact, nothing bent. Good. Our spring looks good there, and this link good. arm looks good. Okay, that'll pass. What do we got next? Uh, battery mount. We already did that. Okay. Exhaust system must have mufflers attached to engine, no open headers or straight pipes. Okay, do we got a muffler on this one? Uh, yes. Mufflers there? Yes. And intact? Well, that's just the tailpipe. The actual muffler is up here. Oh. This is the muffler. This is what 
makes it quiet. So that's there and attached. Nothing hanging down. Okay, sounds good. What do we got next? Uh, additional safety features. Uh, we can skip over that. Those are optional. Seat belt. Okay, we'll have to let the vehicle back down and check and make sure we got good working seat belts for every passenger. Okay, we gotta check seat belts, make sure they function and latch. So I gotta pull them all out? Just pull it, pull it out and latch it. Okay, that one functions, that's all we need. That one works. Yep. Are you gonna have a center? I may have a center passenger, so I better check and see if this one works. That one works? It works. Okay. She works too. Okay. Now oh, one check. left. And that one she works. works. So you can have a total of how many people in the vehicle? Five. All right. Lots of seats. Yes. So what's next on our list? Roll bar or non-removable hard top. Okay, so does this one have a removable top? No. So then we don't need a roll bar. So you can check that one off. What's next on the list? Fire extinguisher. A fire extinguisher. What does it say about the fire extinguisher? Minimum two pound type ABC. No halen. Must be securely mounted in a quick release mounting bracket within reach of seat belt seat belted driver must be fully charged gauge style only no push button type okay so let me go get your fire extinguisher all right here's the fire extinguisher for you does that meet the requirements um let me look uh it says abc so that meets the requirements no now it says must be securely mounted in a quick release mounting bracket within reach of seat belt driver. Okay, well this is a quick release mounting bracket right there. So we so have to install that. Yep. Must be fully charged. What? Is it charged? The little gauge right here tells you. It says yes. It's fully charged? Yeah, it's in the green. Yes, it is fully charged. Gauge style only, no push button type, and, and it's a gauge. Yes, it is a gauge. So we're good to go. We just have I gotta to figure, mount this. We gotta mount this and uh, figure out where to mount it. It's gotta be by the seat belt the driver. So it says by driver. You find a place to put it yet? Well, I can't put it on my side, so if I'm wondering if I can put it like this. Well, as long as you can still reach it when you're seat belted into the vehicle, I think that'll work. Sure enough. I'll reach it. I'm... All right. Sounds like a good place to mount it. All right. We got to mount it. We're going to mount it with some self-tapping screws, but I want you to mark it where you're going to put it and draw around the bracket a little bit so we know where to... Right there. And on the other side... You don't have to worry about the holes, just just approximately where the bracket's going to be. There we go. 
Okay. okay. Now we can go check that one off the list. Yes. Alright. The next one says brake pedal pressure. Tested not running. Pedal cannot be spongy or sink to floor. Brakes must have pressure. Spongy or sink to the floor? Right. So all they do is they just uh, sit in it and step on the brake pedal a couple times and make sure that it doesn't go to the floor. So let's do that. Okay. Push in the brake pedal. Does it go to the floor? No. Nope. Then we're good. Yay! That means I brakes. Okay. Mark that one off. Okay. What else we got? Toe strap required. Two inch minimum, four inch okay. maximum. Okay. We can take that out of the Rubicon. We have all that in a, in a bag in the Rubicon. What else we got? Clevis. Yep. That's in the bag in the Rubicon too. Miscellaneous. What do we got for miscellaneous? No visible fluid leaks on vehicle. Okay. No antennas over 48 inches. Okay, we don't have that. M-N-O-R-V sticker. Minnesota off-road sticker. That's not required, that's optional. All right, looks like uh, we only have to go back to the tow points, and maybe we'll save that for another video. Thanks for watching BSF Recovery Team and our new video series of the Budget Trail Rig. Subscribe to our channel so you don't miss our next video where we deal with the secure tow points or secure places to hook for recovery on the vehicle. Keep wheeling, stay safe, and maybe we'll see you out in the woods.